High Velocity Wrestling is a professional wrestling promotion based in Western North Carolina. HVW's events provide a family atmosphere featuring old school pro wrestling with a modern day flair, giving a little something for everyone. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the HVW Podcast, the official podcast for High Velocity Wrestling. I'm your host, Tom Clark, and we're here to give you the latest news and rumors surrounding HVW, including updates on upcoming events and much more. Remember to follow us on all of our social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. The links are available in this episode's description. What's up, kids? Welcome to the HVW Official Podcast. This is episode number 30. Three zero, baby. What were you doing when you hit the big three zero? We won't get too personal. I can barely remember three zero. That's terrible. Isn't that terrible? I'm sure I had a boring 30th birthday. I'm trying to think back. I got nothing. Uh, this is not a birthday podcast. You're in luck, so don't sweat it. How's everybody doing tonight? We haven't been here to hang out with you in a scoosh. It's been a while, yes. However, we're back live in a living color. We're going to bring the man of the hour on board here today, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, HVW owner and promoter, Gary Benfield. Gary, what's up, my friend? How are you this evening? What's up, Tom? How are you, brother? I'm excited. I'm doing great, man. I have uh, doing great. I've got the the stuff happening. We got to get the ticker ticking. Let's find that ticker so she can begin ticking. Uh, it's, it's important to get the brand out there, kids. It's all about brand. You know what I mean? Her world's obsessed with brand. I'm no different. No, obsessed. There it is. Obsessed. There it goes. Um, so, yes, we've got loads of stuff to cram into the next little bit here. We're going to update the good people out there on the latest promos leading up to HVW Proving Ground. Saturday, June 5, 2021. High Velocity Wrestling. Coming back, kids. Everybody right. watching right now, do me a favor. Hit Hit that like and heart button. Do it right now. Every one of you watching, and there's more coming on, awesome. Hit the button for us. It, it puts no money in my pocket. It just lets us know that you're there, and we'd appreciate it. Bam, look at that. I do that on the main event, and everybody just starts clicking. It's pretty cool. So, um, <laughs> so man, I know you're excited. Talk to the people before we start showing promos here, man. Talk a little bit about uh, Proving Ground June 5th. Tom, it, man, it's uh... – it's shaping up to be probably one of the best cards HVW's had ever, I think. I, uh, uh, man, the excitement's out there. The promos are coming in. The, the the wrestlers are excited to get back in the ring for HVW. The fans are excited to get back to HVW. I'm excited to get back to HVW. Uh, a lot's happened since uh, First Strike, and it's uh, with the pandemic and in my personal life and just – a lot has changed and, and it's uh the future could be very, very bright for HVW, Tom. Man, first strike, the way you said that, it kind of you hesitated because like you're trying to remember the name of the event. It feels like a hundred years ago. Uh, yeah, it doesn't it, it does. It does. I mean it feels like it feels like the same distance between now and first strike than it was um uh, the last HVW show to last January of 20. I mean, wow. it, if, if it feels for me, it does because so much has happened between right. last February and now. That's a big statement, dude. I know you don't make that lightly. That's a big statement. It's huge, Tom. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we were pumped up coming out of 2019. We had every reason to be um, uh, looking forward to a great 2020. And then we got sidetracked just a bit. But you know what? It's in our rear view. Hopefully a lot of things are in our rear view now. Absolutely. Always forward. Forward, forward always. always. Thank you. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, we cannot wait, as Gary said, to get to uh, Proving Ground. If you have not got your tickets, now comes the part where I ask for money. <laughs> yes, we it's, need money. Yeah, it's not going to my pocket, kids. So, so never you fear. It's for the good of the company, okay? Uh, we would love to run stuff for free all the time. However, as everyone watching now and later knows, 
The men and women who perform in high velocity wrestling deserve to get paid, deserve to be compensated for their effort because they're all professionals. This is professional Absolutely. wrestling. Okay? Absolutely. And our, our entertainers, our performers, our wrestlers, more importantly, get paid. So, uh, yes, there is admission prices. As of right now, today, right now, the restrictions are still in place. Now, yes. that, doesn't, that doesn't mean on June 5th they, they, they will still be. But right now, as far as we know, we've got 100 seats to fill, and we're going to be distanced with masks on. If anybody doesn't like that, I can't do anything about it. Neither I mean, can I, he. I can't change it. Can't change it. So it's going to be okay. Once you get past all the uh, the the stuff and the wearing this and hoo-ha, whatever, you're still going to have fun. What are you worried about? Right. Eventbrite.com is where you go, kids. Eventbrite.com. Tinyurl.com slash HVWTix, T-I-X. Actually, it's HVWPGTIX. I'll get it right. So, yes, uh, our links are all over our social media, folks. All you got to do is go clicking, 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 and get you some stuff. You don't want to miss this show. No, don't miss it, man. You guys will be kicking yourselves later if you miss it. Jack, what's up, my friend? Larry in the house. What's up, Larry? Shannon, how are you? Hope you're doing well tonight. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Um, All right, folks, before we go any farther here, um, uh, a brief word about what we're talking about, about restrictions. Yes, we're going to wear masks. Yes, we're going to be distance uh, six feet. Um, from each other as we should be okay um part two of this is how do the tickets work gary how about you fill the good people in how are the tickets at this point working for proving ground all right at this point we're still doing the take so we got 15 tables that seat five people that table will cost you 100 dollars. so get four of your friends to all pay 20 dollars you guys grab a table. We cannot sell concessions at this time. So I will put a large pizza and a two liter drink on your table for you. We will also have 25 individual chairs that there's not many left. So you should get those really quick. And yeah. the, the cost is the, the individual chairs is tw- is twenty dollars a chair, and it's basically a ring. It'll be a ringside seat, basically, hmm. just like at a normal event. If we were selling ringside or general admission, your twenty dollar seat now would be a ringside seat. There you go. Um, I would think, Gary, that we have made this as easy as possible. And yes. hopefully as hopefully as painless as possible. I mean, the setup is what it is. It's not ideal. However, in this day and age, it is what we can do. So, um, folks, trust me when I tell you that we have taken every precaution uh, into consideration. Uh, we are, and, and uh, Gary and I still have to talk at length about the X, Y, and Z of it. Things are going to be sanitized, kids. We're, we're not going to ask our men and women to get into a ring and, and sweat all over each other and, 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 and potentially kill each other uh, and at least not clean the place up. So that's right. important. Uh, we want all of our, uh, all of our talent to be safe, just like we want to be safe. I don't want to bring anything home to my family. Neither does Gary. It, it, it is what it is. So for anybody out there who may be on the fence about coming to a live pro wrestling event, I promise you, we're going to do everything in our power, take every step necessary to be sure that you are safe and that everybody's doing what they're they're being asked to do. We won't tolerate anyone trying to buck the system. Um, we have a disclaimer that we play at the beginning of every event that describes in great detail what we expect from our audience. No racial slurs, no homophobic slurs. Play nice, be purdy, as my granny would say, okay? <laughs> so one of the new things that we're adding on to this is wear the mask. That's it. That's it. It's not hard. Wear it. You'll be fine. So um, now that all the technicalities are out of the way, uh, how about we show some promos, man? Let's do it. Let's see what's going on, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, we, I think have, have been caught up to the point that we were about two weeks ago. Last time we went live, um, everyone's talking about the main event and I'm not going to spoil it. How about give it to him? Talk about, like, we might as well start with the, with the grand finale. Hey, the main event, dude, sell Tom. it to him. It, it, it's huge, man. It's the first time in history that HVW has ever had 
the ladies main event our show and i'm so dang excited man um sadie lee moss i look i'm i'm a fan i'm a fan of everybody's favorite mom uh so i'm excited to see her get in there with caitlin and 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 hayden and man these, these chicks have Hayden has worked so hard to get back in the ring for HVW to get that knee right. Caitlin better look out. But I, you see, you see Caitlin's promo. You know she ain't worried a bit. She's not worried a bit. Nah, she she's not sweating them. <laughs> Read the comments, Tom. What's 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 the comment? I respect you, but I don't sweat you. That's right. That's right. Uh, Viper is going to be in the lightweight division. <laughs> Hey, 223, brother. Oh, are you? Yes, sir. Uh, you're, you're still not on 205 Live. That belongs to me. That's my show. <laughs> That's right. I'm under 205, so I'm pretty happy about that. That's so awesome, brother. I'm proud of you. The next HVW Cruiserweight Champion. That's right. The flyweights, baby. Here we come. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have no desire to get in the ring and bounce or get bounced. Not at my age. So... I'll be honest, Tom. I'm kind of curious of what my old butt could do with, with the weight off of me. I ain't going to lie. Uh, getting up and down off the floor is much easier. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, you know, like if you're down on one knee doing something and you go to get up and you're like, holy crap, nothing hurt, nothing popped. I didn't, I'm not sweating. This was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Something that small is, is a huge difference. So, yeah. Um, the first promo out the gate in regards to the match that you are speaking of. And by the way, kids, we're not asking three ladies to get in the match and just in the ring, just wrestle. I mean, we could, and it would be great. However, we've got something in the mix. A bam. Okay. For the first time ever. It's over here. It's over here. (laughs) Yeah. Well, for you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The HVW Women's Championship. And as Gary said, uh, Hayden Ramsey has been on the shelf for 14 months. Yes, I mean, it blows my mind. Gary, before we get – before I got to ask you, have you ever been sidelined – I don't know of any serious injury unless you fill me in, but have you been put on the sidelines by somebody, like an attack or like what Hayden went through 14 months ago? Uh, almost the same thing by J.D. Costello and the conspiracy. Legitimately r- tore my ACL. I had an ACL replacement Ooh. because of the, the attack on them. Wow. Dude, that's messed up. I and, mean, and that's... That, it happened like right before I got uh, – uh, oh, I was I had got an opportunity to go do uh, an house, a house show for – Oh, uh, it wasn't, I can't remember the name of it, Tom. They were down in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. It was a, one, they use a lot of the old retired big name guys. And I had an opportunity to go work for them like the weekend after that, that show. And they attacked me that weekend and I didn't get to do that show because of it. It wasn't Dusty's old promotion turnbuckle, was it? No, it wasn't. I can't remember, Tom. It was a long time ago. It, I mean, that was probably 2006, seven. Oh, wow. Well, we were in the old, the building, the second HVW building after we yeah. left the shack. We were in right. that building. We were, yeah. <laughs> I know we the were shack. In that building. Yes, sir, the shack. Well, listen, uh, you probably better than anybody else in our company, maybe, maybe. You know what Hayden's went through the past year. You know how antsy she is to get back in the ring. If and, and I don't know that she's blowing your phone up asking you for advice. Maybe she is. I don't know. But if if you could offer her some unsolicited advice in terms of, hey, it's your first match back. Here's what you expect. I mean, what would you say to her? What was it like for you getting back in the ring after all that time? You know, it, it, for me, I was very nervous about just doing cert, certain movements in the ring, you know, planting my foot the right way or turning – with, with your pl- foot planted or, or, you know, a lot of times not sure what type of boot she wears, but the boots that I wore, a lot of canvases, my boots would s- kind of stick to the canvas depending on what type of canvas it was. Mm-hmm. So I was just always real nervous about turning the wrong way or planting my foot the wrong way or something. And I always kept that in the back of my head. 
Right. And and honestly, I could go back and watch video and I could tell. I could see myself, man, you you was ginger on that turn. Or I could definitely tell that I was taking it easy on that move. You, you know what I'm saying? It right. was just subconsciously not wanting to twist that knee. I mean, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. I, um, you know, I'm sure she'll be ready. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not, sure she will. I'm not really doubting that. I, um, you know, I'm just, uh, and again, kids, a lot of things can change in a year. Uh, sh- this is not the same person that we saw uh, at, at Resurrected and at First Strike. She's a changed woman at this point. I think that, uh, and no disrespect meant to Hayden, I think she was humbled. I think she's humbled herself. I think that she's realized, and you know, the past year she's gotten herself out there. She's establishing a name for herself. She's traveling uh, the country, uh, going to other promotions, being backstage behind the curtain and getting to meet all this talent. And, yep. you know, I, I think it's it's brought her back maybe full circle to where she was where she was when she first got trained. And now she's set her sights on the top and the top in our company for her is HBW Women's Championship. Well, that's that's right. The first uh, ever first ever first ever. She's got an opportunity. She's got a one in three chance. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Let's quit talking about her and let's hear from her. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hayden Ramsey talking about the triple threat women's match for the HW Women's Championship against Caitlin Marie and Sadie Moss at Proving Ground on June 5. Check it out. Fourteen months. That's how long you've kept me out of the ring, Caitlin. I tried for the longest time. I tried to understand why my friend, why my friend that I brought to this promotion. Do you remember that, Caitlin? Do you remember that I brought you to HVW? Why my friend would do this to me? And then it dawned on me. HVW announced that there would be a fatal four-way for the women's championship. And you knew. You knew that if I was in that ring, there'd be no way that you'd walk out with that belt. So you had to take me out because you always take the easy way out. You're an opportunist. And to some degree, I respect that. But where did that opportunity even get you? Because what I see is my name and my face on a poster front and center for this HVW Women's Championship. It's kind of funny how things work out, isn't it? And Sadie, you took me to my absolute limit at HVW Resurrected and I will never forget that. And I expect for you to bring that same passion, same fight, and same desire. Because when I win, I want it to be because I'm the best. But mama, I guarantee you, you simply do not want this as bad as I do. June 5th, HVW Proving Ground, Hayden Ramsey is gonna be wearing some gold. Uh, before we go any further, is she right? It uh, is it is it that neither of neither Caitlin or Sadie want it as bad as she does, brother? I tell you, she's she's hungry. That's for sure, and she's got every right to be because you know we got this brand new belt right here that nobody's ever wore, mm. and uh, you know it's going to look good around one of their waists. So uh, you know I'm excited to get this thing out there, man, for the fans to check it out and see it and. Somebody to somebody to represent it, Tom. Absolutely, represent the first ever HVW Women's Division. Um, she, I mean, she's got some fire, man. She's got some fire. Um, for anybody that's been paying attention to our social media, and I hope all of you have, uh, <laughs> uh, you, then you know that uh, that all three women have commented on this. Hayden was the first one out the gate with something to say. She has been answered in, in short order by everyone's favorite mom, Sadie Lee Moss. Um, how about this promo we're getting ready to watch from Sadie? I think, I mean, we'll get into it after we watch it here, Gary, but it's very, it's it's signature Sadie Lee Moss. It's to the point. She doesn't mess around. We've seen promos from her in the past that were cute. She was, she when she was messing with Hayden a little bit on the road to Resurrected and kind of having fun with her. She's not having fun in this promo, dude. She's all business. Right. She's strictly business right here. I, Sadie's ready. That's for sure. I told you she's my favorite, Tom. I dude, a lot of people are predicting she'll be the first champ. So we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, this is everyone's favorite mom, Sailing Moss, talking about triple threat women's match 
at HVW Proving Ground on June 5. Check it out. Opportunities like we have on June 5th don't come easy to women like me. You see, your generation just expects to be main eventing. Your generation just expects to be chosen to compete for the first ever HBW Women's Championship. Caitlin Marie, you are an opportunist. And Hayden, I can agree with you on that. So I guess we all have at least one thing in common. But Hayden, you are so filled with rage that all you can see is red. Me, on the other hand, I'm expecting both of you to underestimate me because I have had to scratch and claw and roll up my sleeves and get dirty. Something that your generation will never understand. Because I respect the generations that came before that paved the way. I don't take credit for that. You ladies have all the ability. You have all the talent. I am proud to step into the ring with the two of you and I hope that you underestimate me I hope that you guys expect me to just be some washed off old lady because guess what you got another thing coming sweetheart I've said all that I can say if I can't talk to you then well it's time to stop talking and you know what I'm hungry I don't know that we've ever seen a promo like that from her. That was, uh, dude. She's focused. I mean, she. That's definitely not the 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 normal side of Sadie that we're used to seeing. She's usually chipper and you know just excited. You know, not yeah. now. She's focused, brother. She she's on a mission. And you know, honestly, man, I, it's almost as if someone was in the room with her, like she was physically talking to someone. That's what it felt like. Um, yeah, she's she's laser focused. I mean, what do you make of of her comments about you know this generation expects things handed to them and doesn't want to work for them? Do you see some truth in that when it comes to the business here, brother? I don't know. I mean, I know in my generation you wasn't handed opportunities that, that the, some of these younger guys are being handed these days. I mean, uh, there, there's uh, there's fads out there with. I don't know, man. Very young kids that that definitely shouldn't. I don't know, Tom. I don't know how to say it without offending somebody. I'm just saying it. The younger generation don't want to work for what they're getting. Let's say, let's put it like that. You know, mm. you know how long, how many bumps did I take? I mean, my my trainer was on here earlier. He'll tell you how many bumps I ever took before I st stepped in front of a crowd. I mean. Right how many laps I ran around that damn Legion hall and you know, how, how many times we set that ring up and broke it down. And, and, you know, these young kids ain't doing this stuff these days, man. Right. Uh, uh, the judge is in the house. <laughs> yes, sir. There uh, he is. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I could say I, I don't agree with her cause I, I feel like we've, the, the younger stars of HVW are putting the work in. However, I'm not in her shoes. And listen, her shoes are not mine. And what has she has seen, her life experience, I can't relate to it. I'm not a woman. Right. I, I think it's I think it's hypocritical of a white guy to presume to know what a black guy is thinking, just like I would think it's hypocritical, hypocritical of a man to, to think, well, I'll tell you what that woman's thinking. I don't know. I'm not in her shoes. I'm That's right. not my life. So... Her experience is not mine, dude. May she? It's sounds, not mine either, you know. Right, right. She sounds pissed off, man. She, she definitely does. <laughs> she definitely does. You know, dude. You know, you think back at resurrected. You know, Sadie come out. She was excited to be a part of HVW. You know, she brought the fans a tray of cookies, and what happened? It got slapped in her face, and you Ooh. know. So I can understand why she's pissed off. Now she's got an opportunity to walk away with the first ever HVW Women's Championship, and Caitlin Marie's intervened and and took an op took a, uh, an opportunity that, that yeah. you know what I mean. Just yeah, like they sure. like they both said, Caitlin's an, an opportunist.
Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I, I kind of see where they're coming from. I, I kind of see where she's coming from when it's like, you know, uh, yes, an opportunity. We've heard that those words mentioned in, in pro wrestling uh, circles before. This person's an opportunist. I, and I totally get it. Um, we won't spend a whole lot of time uh, prefacing this next promo. This is the third of the trio. This is the one that the other two ladies are talking about. Hayden can't wait to kill her. Sadie can't wait to beat her. So, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, either way, they want they want this lady to uh, uh, to uh, to be finished at at uh, proving ground. She's got other things in mind, ladies yes, and gentlemen. She does. This is the third member of this triple threat match for the HW Women's Championship, proving ground, June five. This is Caitlin Marie. Take a listen. OHVW oh, management. You guys have your fans waiting on the edge of their seat to see what Caitlin Marie has to say. And I must apologize for the delay. But you see, when I saw the match announcement, well, I just assumed it was a mistake. HVW, you guys are having your first ever all women's main event for the first ever HEW Women's Championship, and this is the match you pick. I mean, you have Caitlin Marie, the biggest, baddest chick in the game, against No Knees Hayden Ramsey and nursing home Sadie Lee Moss. Is this a joke? I mean, Hayden, you had so much to say about me, borderline obsessive, might have a crush on me, but let's not even get into that. Let's talk about the fact that you called me an opportunist. Like, that's a bad thing. Honey, I'd rather be an opportunist than a quitter like you were at the last show when you walked out because things didn't go your way. You talk about being front and center on the flyer. Well, honey, where else was your ego going to go? And you talk about how you're going to prove yourself and make a name and be the first ever champion. Well, you see, honey, while well, you've been busy sitting around making excuses and playing victim, I've been making a name for myself on the indie scene. And Sadie, don't think I forgot about you. You think I'm doubting you? Oh, honey, I'm not that stupid. I know exactly who you are, Sadie Lee Moss. Hell, you were my first match. You're great. Good. You were great. But you see, Sadie, you have lost that spunk. Your sparkle, the thing that made you extra special. And I'm sure that you think because you got the victory over me in our last match that should have been a tag match that turned quickly into a handicap match, that maybe you stand a chance. And well, I'm here to assure you, you don't. Because you see, you ladies don't understand this isn't my title to win. It's my title to lose. And come June 5th in Fletcher, North Carolina, I can't wait for the Instagram-worthy picture that follows our match, which involves me standing over the two of you holding my HVW Women's Championship. So, honeys, I hope you are working your tootsies off getting ready for me because you stand absolutely no chance. See you there. <laughs> hey, S Sadie and Hayden might have their hands full, Tom. Uh, <laughs> How do you so, respond to that? <laughs> I uh, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, this gonna, it'll hit you from out of nowhere, but it, I was watching this and I was thinking of something. We can both sit back all day long and talk about the, the terrible things she did last year, and we've talked a lot about it. We've right. talked about how she betrayed her best friend, stabbed her in the back, took her knee out, didn't care. Uh, you know, this is life. This is real life, folks. I mean, put her on the shelf and didn't care during a pandemic, no less, okay? And, and, and just walked away laughing. And still, she's filing her nails. We could talk about this all day long and say, oh, this is terrible. At one time in your career, you were on the wrong side of the fans. Didn't care what anybody thought. Let's be straight. In EOD, we didn't care who we hurt. No, Quick sir. flashback, kids. Those were other times. I'm much more calm now. Okay? <laughs> we didn't care who we hurt. You cut promos like that where you didn't care. You thought you were the hottest thing in the building, and you were. And EOD was the coolest thing going. We didn't care who didn't like it. You've, no, you've been in her shoes. What is she not seeing that you saw later? 
What is she missing in her attitude right now that you you came to find out later with yours? Well, she's just she's second guessing her opponent, and that's the biggest. No matter, you know, yeah, she called her no knees, Hayden. So she's already just assuming Hayden's knee is not going to allow her to do anything, and she, her focus is on Sadie. She said it. I'm not second guessing you, you know. So she, I'm not overlooking you, Caitlin's overlooking Hayden, and that's going to be the mistake she's making. I did it. I did it. You know, I turned my back on my partner at one time. I overlooked him. We had a one-on-one match, and I lost in front of about 400 people in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, one Saturday night. So, hey, you can't un- overest- underestimate your opponent or overlook your opponent. I mean, Caitlin's young, and, and she's still um... – She's very arrogant. Yeah, she's cocky, and let's let's face it, man. She's backed it up so far, and uh, so far you know, she has. We watched her work in other promotions over the past year, and and uh, you know she's she's done some highly questionable things, but yeah, it's 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 how she goes about her business. So you know, if there's lessons to be learned, I'm sure she'll learn them. But in the meantime, <laughs> she could be the favorite here. I mean, maybe that promo changes the way everybody thinks about this because all of a sudden. I don't know if Hayden or Sadie, either one's a favorite to win this match now. Well, all I can say is, you know, the other two girls better watch because I don't know if you've been keeping up with what's happening on, on the on the indie scene. But, you know, Caitlin's got a little partner she's been running the scene with. Mm, that's right. You, know, you, you seen this little Ella Envy young lady? Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. Just keep your eye, watch your back. Hayden, Sadie, watch your back. That's all I can tell you. Well, folks, Ella Envy was was uh, uh, in the plans for HVW last year. I mean, yes, and and you could probably find the the pics and stuff somewhere online that we were hyping her coming to the company, and then COVID happened, and we all got sidetracked for a bit. But uh, hey, look, I I put you on the spot earlier. I'm gonna do it again right now. Why not? Um, you tell me, because you and I have not discussed this behind the scenes, and we've barely touched on in conversation, right? You were supposed to be reaching out to her in terms of HVW. Have you got a deal in place? I mean, let's break it to the let the people know right now. Is she gonna is she coming to the company? She's been invited. Okay. But that's all I can she's been invited. The invitation's been put there. Okay. So cool. we'll, and and uh she seen the invite. She responded to the invite, but she the response was not a yes or a no. Ah. So we shall see. Well, kids, not for nothing, but uh, nine times out of ten when these things happen behind the scenes, it's it's not technically a Facebook message. It's more like a text or an email, or you go through a third party. And then even before that, person says yes or no it has to be well let me send you something to look at and if you feel good about it put your name on it right it's you know uh, so technically she's not signed anything right no sir and i and i you know i pitched some ideas at her that you know what we might want to do and i like i said i got a response it was not a yes it was not a no it really wasn't a maybe it was just really kind of left me wondering is she going to show up or not? Right. So Interesting. we shall see. Well, as I like to say, stay tuned, kids. Uh, that that could be a work in progress. Um, we've had several people in the chat doing this, you know, and, and going nuts on us. Your friend, your ex-friend. Your friend. Never my friend. My sworn <laughs> enemy. I don't know how that, I still know how that happened. I am righteous. Um, he is attempting to talk a whole lot of stuff and don't think I've not seen it. I've seen it. However, I decided instead to let this next promo do the talking for us. Yes, sir. Because you see, Ivan M. Rice has decided that he was going to talk about the New Age Villains, his tag team, going into the HVW Tag Team Championship match at, at Proving Ground. <laughs> and... Uh, he got interrupted. Yes, he did. <laughs> this was uh, 
I opened this when it was sent to me and I said, okay. And then I saw why he was kicking the video off and then it made perfect sense. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the HVW tag team championships shifting gears here, folks. Yes. The HVW women's championship will be decided at proving grounds. So too will the HVW tag team championships. Okay. It is a four corners. Oh, there they are. <laughs> there are two. Yes, sir. Words. There you go. We need to get these around somebody's waist, huh? Absolutely. Uh, it is a four corners tag team match for the championship belts that Gary just had in his hands. Gary, tell the good people who the four teams are in this match. All right, I yanked my earplugs out. So, I, all right. So, the four teams of this match, we got, we got, we actually got two teams debuting in HVW. Uh, we got the White Claw Outlaws coming all the way down from Tennessee to debut at HVW. We got uh, Cam Jackson and K.O. Mari debuting in HVW. We got the Foundation going to be in the house and, of course, NAV. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, re I really like NAV. I just don't care for the, the people they associate themselves with. I mean, I'll be honest with you. They were doing fine. Yes, they were. Uh, they were doing fine until they invited uh, this guy who doesn't want us to show the video. <laughs> show it. Show it, Tom. Listen, I'm listen, Gary. <laughs> for once, I'm going to disagree with you. I think cooler heads need to prevail. I think we need to be professional here. Okay. We've, got a, we've got a contracted manager who's yes. on the roster. He's part of HVW. He is asking politely in his own way, to not show the video. Now, I, I am level-headed as they come. Okay. And and so is Gary. We are not unreasonable men, okay? No, we're not. We're very approachable. Uh, this we're, There's no need to be uncivilized. Having said all that, ladies and gentlemen, here's the video that I am righteous <laughs> doesn't want you to see. Oh, you're in trouble, Tom. Here we go, kids. Check this out. Oh, enjoy, Ivan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you as a very, very confident man. Because over the past weeks, everybody's gearing up for June 5th. Fletcher, North Carolina, HVW has its return. Well, what you see behind me here is washed up cars. They're mechanically defective. That represents everybody, everybody who is facing the HVW's next Tag Team Champions. Oh, guys. That's what you were saying. Come on now. I want to hear it loud and proud. Come on, Righteous. Tell me what's up. Tell me what's up, boy. That's what I thought. Because the truth is, on June 5th, June 5th. NAV. NAV. White Claw Outlaw. White Claw Outlaw. Foundation. They meet something they never, ever met before. Let me explain to you the stylistic, the timing, the movements, the quickness, the agility, the brains of K.O. King K.O. Mari. And let me tell you about Cameron Jackson. Let me tell you about Cameron Jackson. The maze, amazing, simply amazing. The road wraps around any people you put them in front of. And I can talk you straight out the door, brother. So, on that day, I want you to tell your boys something. I want you to tell everybody something. Report to HVW. Report to the NAV. NAV. Report to the Foundation. Report to the White Claw Outlaws. That on that day, when it comes to everybody versus Cameron Jackson and K.O. Mario, it is us versus you. You versus we. We versus they. And you can't handle the king. And number one. You can speak now. I, I can't see. I can't see. Dude, when, when Chuck's hollering, I can't see. I can't see. I was cracking up. I love. Oh, Cameron Jackson, I love you. Uh, <laughs> so, Cam Jackson and KMR were the last team to hear from. Uh, we've heard from them. And, uh, yeah, this was uh, uh, better than I could have expected. Um, 
Hey, look, don't think he doesn't have a laugh at, at our expense every chance he gets. So I'm oh, going to have I a little know. bit of a chuckle at his. <laughs> yes, Why sir. not? Why not have a little bit of a chuckle at his expense? He'll disagree with that, but it's okay. Oh, that was so funny. Um, they're hey, I'm excited. I'm excited to see those guys, man. I really am. Uh, we, we, uh, I know Amari, uh, I've seen his work. I have not seen Cam. So I'm, I'm anxious to see these two gentlemen get in the ring and ply their craft. Um, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a great match, dude. I say the word steal the show all the time. I think this match could steal the show, man. You yes, know what sir. I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, that's what we want to do as, as bookers, right? Every, we want every match to steal the show. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. We've got some picks here, Sugar Shane, saying the White Claw Outlaws are coming for the HVW tag belts. Uh, Jack Dillon says new NAV. There he is. We'll be collecting those titles. So we've got some uh, we got some people speaking their mind right now. Yes, they do. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. We've heard from the uh, White Claw Outlaws. We've heard from the Foundation. We heard from the NAV, and uh, and now we've heard from uh, Jackson and Amari. Um, okay, so. This, listen, I, I, I'm throwing it to you again as the seasoned pro wrestler on the podcast. That's you. Oh, okay, okay. So the spotlight's on you, kid. Get ready. Your 15 minutes are coming up. This is good stuff. We're going to make you famous here. So <laughs> you are a tag team veteran and held multiple. We're probably talking in excess of 20 tag team titles at this point, aren't we? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Over the years, many, many. I mean, let's say you were in this match, uh, and whether it's EOD or whoever, and you've got these four guys, these four teams. I mean, how in the world can you break it down team by team and say, here's what I would do here, here's what I would do? What do you do with Jackson Omari? What's your number one goal going into that? Well, you know, I, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk as if it was me and Steele going into this match as the okay. EOD, okay? Right. So you know what we're going to do. The first thing we want to do is take out – we want to take out the veterans. We want to get rid of the veterans. So we're probably going after the foundation first because hmm. Dylan and Travis has been around for a while. Right. And being that they're bigger boys, we're going to get them outside and wear them out. So just leave them laying outside on the ring Why? Why Cam and, and Kay and the New Age villains are wearing each other out in the ring. Right. So, you know, once they've wore each other out, you know, we're going to take out the NAV, you know, and what, what, why you handling Chuck, me and Steel are going to take out the NAV and we ain't worried about that. And then we just got them young kids to worry about, you know, the only thing we got to do is slow them jokers down. That's mm -hmm. all we got to do is slow them down. Ground and pound, baby, just like us old veterans used to do. Grab them in that old headlock and just choke them down on the mat a little bit. Wear them out. They can't do nothing with us old guys. That's a wily veteran right there. I mean, I, I think you just gave the blueprint on how to win this match. Now, the problem is you didn't give any of these teams the blueprint. You gave the blueprint as if you were in it yourself. So That's what you asked me if I, I was in the match. Totally, totally. But what I'm saying is these four teams can't really take anything from what you said because they're in it. And they've got to worry about each other, but you're looking at it from from a God spot from up here where you're looking down on it saying, okay, here's what I would do here, here. They don't have the benefit of that, that over that, no, that seeing over. I mean, they have to be in it. And dude, what what, what was it Mike Tyson said? Uh, uh everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. I mean, <laughs> they can plan all day long. I mean, but realistically speaking. If I had to tell you today, give me the pick of who you think is going to win this match. Who would be your pick out of these four teams, honestly? Honestly? Yeah. If I if I if I was a betting man, okay? Strictly because of the knowledge and the years that they have behind them, I'm going to pick the foundation. Oh, interesting. I know that they're both the biggest two boys in the match. You know, they're, they're probably the worst the worst in shape of anybody in the match. But the guys are smart, and, and they wrestle smart. And I trained them, so. <laughs> <laughs> is that the truth? I mean, that's is, the truth. 
That's is the that truth. why you picked him? Come on now. Is no, it? Dil- no, Dylan and Travis have been teaming for several years now, man. They're a right. great tag team. They work well together. They understand tag team wrestling. You right. watch when they take the ring how everything slows down. And they'll work at their pace as long as they can control the match. I, and that's, I what, think, that's what they got to do. They got to control the match. You know, uh, the best NBA players will tell you that when they get into a rhythm, that that goal may as well be an ocean because they can't miss. When they get right. in that rhythm, it's it's just lights out. They can't miss a shot. And they'll tell you, when I get going, I I, I won't miss. Yeah, when you said that the match slows, they'll slow the match down. That's what I, it came to my mind was that when they get into a rhythm, it's going to be hard to beat them because everything will be moving in slow motion to them because they've slowed it down. They've got time to breathe. They got time to digest right. it. They've got time to analyze it. Whereas Jackson and Omari, if I can pick on them a little bit, I imagine they're going to be full throttle, hundred miles and hundred miles an hour, both of them, which is great for a, for a, 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 a blitz offense. It's a blitz offense right off the bat, right out the gate. You're like, oh my God, what's happening? It's a flurry of offense, right? Right. But as you said earlier, when you were analyzing this match, they're going to get tired eventually. They're young, but eventually, if if you just clip one knee, take one leg off of either one All of them, takes. and gone. you know, and that's no disrespect to them, dude. They no, can very well, they can very well be the next tag team champions. Oh, I I agree. I mean, they're both very talented. It's just yeah. just, just they they're still young, very young in the business, and you know Dylan and Travis has some has some years behind them. So I I, I don't know. They got an advantage. And I to the other three, to the foundation, the White Claw Outlaws, K, Cameron, you better have somebody watching Chuck because Chuck gonna stick his nose in there. Oh yeah, and uh, you know uh, I got a soft spot in my heart for managers. You know that. Uh, not all of them. So, you know. <laughs> you but, see his uh, comment, right? Yeah, I'm not putting it up there because, you know. <laughs> he called you time, Clark. <laughs> I don't know. God, is he is he like, uh, he has he has problem with grammar, kids. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> um, NAV were dangerous before he came along. Oh, uh, yeah. And now they're they, deadly. You, you definitely can't, can't underestimate them. That's for sure. Nathan Cross. That that kid, I, he he's talented, and, and you know, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, that kid, I, I, he's just a powerhouse. Watch out, because you, the other kids are in trouble. That's for sure. Ryan Riley is uh, powerhouse is the best way to put. It. They complement each other so well. Right, and, they do. Uh, they work well off of each other. And you know, they uh, they've got as much as they've done already. They've still got a long way to go before they ever called a career. They've got an entire future ahead of them. So, yeah, we're just going to hope that it's not crippled by certain people. So, That's right. Um, let's change gears one more time before we uh, wrap it up here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about the HVW Championship match. One more tile left to be decided. We have heard from Crucifix. Um, in fact, we've got time. None of you have anywhere to be, right? Cool. Here we go, Tom. So let's we got four promos to show when we're talking about this match. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about there she is, ladies and gentlemen, the HVW championship. Let's get this thing around somebody's waist. This will be a 10 man over the top battle royale. The last man, uh, in the actually, what happens is it gets down to two participants, then it becomes a regular pro wrestling match. If you get thrown over the top, you can you still lose, but also you can be pinned or submitted. Right, right. And the last guy left will be the brand new HVW champion. There are four spots that are guaranteed for these four gentlemen. We have not heard from Joshua Cutshaw. If you know Josh, you know he's different. He's and a little so, twisted. Yeah. I don't know when we're going to see a video or how it's going to sound or how, even how it's going to look in his own good time. So that's what I'll say. Um, but however, the first guy out the gate was one of the four that is already guaranteed for this guaranteed a spot. Former HVW champion Crucifix, ladies and gentlemen, let's let you take a listen and take a view of the Greek Wolverine Crucifix talking about proving ground on June five. June fifth, HVW returns. 
Proving Ground, which is a funny name if you consider that I'm the only guy in HBW that has nothing left to prove. The guys aren't on my level. It's fine, though. If you want to put nine guys in a ring with me, I understand your concern. Because when you put singles matches in front of me, we see what happens. They lose. It doesn't matter what match I am on the card that night. I'm the main event. Last time HVW had its doors open, I was at the last match, but I was the main event. No one remembers the last match. Only thing people remember is Chris Vicks hitting a power bomb off the top rope and walking out successful. I'm the only veteran left in HVW. The last guy who claimed to be a veteran got in my face, and now he's in South Carolina playing Russian Louette by himself. June 5th, call me the Greek Wolverine, call me what you want, you will be calling me HBW Champion. <laughs> HBW, HBW fans, it's been too long, get ready, get your fix. That Joker's on a mission, Tom. Uh, hands down, one of the best talkers in the game today, by far. Um, he sets the bar extremely high, ladies and gentlemen. When you and I first saw this promo, we did the show here that week, and we both kind of said, the, without saying it, we were both thinking TJ Boss. Right. Because it really felt like he took a shot at TJ Boss. Right. When he said that no one remembers the main event of First Strike, I'm like, excuse me, you forgot TJ in six? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's who man. TJ had TJ, TJ didn't take it too kindly either. Did he? Yeah. He responded and, uh, folks, we're going to go ahead and feed it to you. Here is the response from the big man on campus about proving ground. June five TJ boss. Ladies and gentlemen, it's yours. Truly the big man on campus, TJ boss. And on June 5th, I made my return to HVW for proving grounds as I walk in with nine other wrestlers to determine who will be the HVW champion. Now, it's a couple guys I know very well, like TGA Moss, Joshua Cutshaw, those two guys, I've beat them. I beat them bad. And then there's the Greek Wolverine crucifix, which been, you caught my eye. You really have. You've been talking a lot of junk on social media, talking about how you're the, the veteran of the HBW locker room. Well, let me tell you something, crucifix. I am the star of the HBW locker room. When you see HBW flyers, you see this face right here. I am the main event. And when you did, when you talk about that, you don't have to be in the main event to be the main event. I tell you that as an insult. So Chris Fitz, I hope you, I hope you bring your lunch pail because you and eight other wrestlers are going to feel the pain from TJ boss. June 5th, proven grounds. I will walk out of that battle royal, your new HVW champion. The big okay. man has spoke. Is he right when he said that uh, you take offense to someone saying you don't have to be in the main event to be the main event? How do you feel I, about that? Absolutely. That's a shot. That's a cause. Because, dude, this is the way I look at when, when I was a wrestler and I wrestled for other promotions outside of HVW, if, if the promoter came to me or I walked in the locker room and seen that I was in the main event that night, it, it made me feel like that, that I, I worked to get there. You know, the, the promoter thought enough of my work to put me in his main event. You know, he he thought enough of what what he had seen me do in the last few weeks to earn that spot. You know, when when you 
when you're in the main event, you're the show. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's uh, that should be everybody's goals to main event whatever show they're on. And if you're not in the main event, you in your head you should be. And you know, kids, don't don't take this the wrong way. I don't think either Gary or I, or I at all are trying to diss Chris Fix here. He is no, not at all. Former HVW champion, established veteran, one of the best in the locker room. I just I find it interesting. You know, if I can rewind a second for the tag team title situation, we talked about the White Claw Outlaws a couple weeks ago, doing the jokes, doing the ha ha, doing the oh we're funny and on TV and stuff. I still maintain that a lot of that is just playing head games with these other tag teams. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think Chris Fix plays head games in terms of I'm going to put on this and let you think this when really I'm I'm going. No, he flat out feels the way he feels. You, there's nothing to see through. That's him, right? Am I wrong about this? No, that's, that's, that's the Greek Wolverine right there, brother. And he's on a mission. Um, you know, I've had a conversation with Chris, and that, you know, that, he ain't. He ain't too stable right now. This, oh. this, this Joker's head is is all over the place. Yeah, the last message he sent me uh, was 300 words, and I had to <laughs> – yeah, I don't know what he was doing when he sent it, but it was uh, – there was some expletives in it that I can't repeat here in front of the kids. Uh, yes. Uh, and and I don't know what – he just was rambling, and he, he mentioned boss, he mentioned the title – and it was in response to this. So I don't know if we're going to see another promo for him or not. I don't know if it's such a good idea because God knows what he'll say. But I'm with you. I don't think he's in his right mind right now. Sugar Shane no. says, I picked TJ to win, but I've gained a lot of respect for Chris. I called him out, and he said he would prove me wrong. I can respect that. Well, there you go. Yes, he did. And Shane, if you've never seen Chris Fix in the rain, trust me, my friend, you're going to you're gonna get uh, your eyes open. He's very, very good. I don't think we've ever questioned how good he is. Uh, all right, so let's see. Let's uh, – we've got – how many more we got here? we got two more to show you good people, uh, and then we will call it an evening. Um, another man that's guaranteed a spot in this match is the great Alexander Moss, TGA. TGA flew on to your radar in 2019, uh, as did his other half, Sadie Lee Moss. Spoiler alert: they're a, they're a thing. They don't are. be looking. At, don't be looking at TGA with his shirt off, thinking he's all dreamy. You can if you want to, but <laughs> he's spoken for, ladies. So relax. So, uh, dude, TGA brings something t- different to this match, maybe than anybody else. What do you think that something different is that he's going to bring to this battle royal? Oh, uh, that if you re, if you remember his match from the, from first strike, that Joker is a ball of fire when he comes to the ring, and I that's going to be the biggest thing for for everybody in this, is to get their hands on him to throw him over the top rope because mm. this this Joker's all over the place, Tom. Huh? Yeah, and and TGA smart. He's young, but he's smart. You know he uh, he was trained well, and and yeah, TGA's not don't don't. Overlook him. He, he very possibly could be the next HVW champ. And, you know, we were talking about Caitlin maybe having too much of an ego. When TGA speaks and talks about climbing the ladder and this, the thing he does, I don't really hear ego. I just hear confidence. Am I wrong? To me, it sounds like confidence. <clears throat> you got to have it, Tom. You got to have confidence in this business, brother. You got to go into that match knowing that that – you're as good, if not better, than everybody involved with you. A battle royal is a different type of match. You know, you don't have one opponent. In this case, he's got nine opponents. Very true. You know, Very you true. gotta you gotta have eyes in the back of your head. You can't mm-hmm. trust anybody in this match because your best friend will flip you over the top rope. And here's what I'll say before we show this promo here, man. Uh, the guy that won the first match of our return show, resurrected January 25th, 2020, was TGA. Exactly so, right. I mean that if that's setting the table for what's to come, TGA could be our next champion in HVW. Well, that's Ladies why gentlemen, that's why we we chose him to be a part of this battle royal. I think he earned his way into it, honestly. Absolutely. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Alexander Moss talking about the 10 man over the top rope battle royale set to take place at Proving Ground on June 5. HVW. High Velocity Wrestling makes its long-awaited return. 
And it's almost like deja vu. I feel like just a little over a year ago, we did this. Because we did. But this time we return with much higher stakes. And who better to enter into the ring with nine other capable and very proven competitors than TGA. Nine competitors, one ring, one prize. To crown the new HVW heavyweight champion. I've already heard comments for two of the guys, and I've wrestled many of the guys that I will be in the ring with on the 5th. TJ Boss is talking about he's the big man on campus, and nobody can change that. And big man, you're right, you've beat me, twice to be exact. Chris Affix, okay, you might be the vet in the locker room, but see, here's my issue. You're both living in the past. I even heard Joshua Cutshaw's name. I don't care how many of you you bring. The tomfoolery won't work. You're looking at your next HVW heavyweight champion. I don't care if I have to go through nine, 20, or 30. I will be the one that leaves with the title around my waist. He's got, a, he's got a lot to prove. He's got a lot to prove, Tom. Determination. Uh, you know, on some level, despite the self-confidence, which he's got an abundance of, he knows the odds are against him. Every man in this match knows the odds are against him. You got a Absolutely. one in 10 chance. I mean, one in 10. It's when you get down to the last two, you got a one in two chance. It's much better odds. But in the beginning, dude, you've been in God, God knows how many battle roles you've been in over the years. How many times have you ended up outside the ring and didn't even realize, hold the freak, am I out of the ring? Like, because it can happen just like, wait a minute, just like that, right? Yeah, it can. And it's happened to me a couple times because, like I said, you got to have eyes in the back of your head. And I forget yeah. that. And I turn yeah. my back and get flipped over. Mm. But, you know, then as I got, as I became a wily veteran, uh, I, I learned a technique that used to get me, keep me in the end all the time. Well, don't give it away. Don't no, give it away. I'm not. I'm not because <laughs> I'm not. Trust me, I can't give my technique away. But I, I'll, I'll be at the end of the battle royal. I promise you. Yeah, I mean, if and and you know, you said it right. TGA's young and he's still on the rise. And uh, you know, I I, I think he's, he's just got to keep that excitement in check. You know, don't yeah. get don't get too excited to the point that it makes you make a mistake we've heard that we've heard the catchphrase of the, of the old saying goes it's a marathon not a sprint battle rule is a marathon right <laughs> i mean you gotta be read the comments that's my trainer <laughs> Stel, oh, Siri already knew see he's giving it away <laughs> judge says stay in the corner there you go uh, oh. I mean, it is harder to get you over the top if you're in the corner because you can anchor yourself between both top ropes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, anchor. <laughs> and it's not that you can't be thrown out, but the odds are even if one guy gets one leg, you still have an ability to brace right. yourself. Right. Makes total sense. Yeah. Makes total <laughs> sense. I mean, how many times have we seen a boxing match over the years where they're in the middle of the ropes and the guy actually takes a tumble through the ropes because he can't get his footing? Right, right. I mean, it's that easy to lose your footing, and then all of a sudden you're on the floor, and you're like, oh, crap, I just got eliminated. Eliminated, yep. I can totally get that. I totally get that. Um, Yeah, it, it's uh, it's going to be something else to see, man. It's going to be exciting to uh, – I'm excited. All three of these championships, kids. Let me tell you something. Um. This is going to be a big night for us. This is something we're all looking forward to. Hopefully all the talent's looking forward to it. We've got folks who are ready to claim those titles. Uh, we shall see. The, let the chips fall where they may, folks. Uh, well, we line them up. It's up to them to knock each other down, honestly. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll wait and see how everything plays out. Um, we're going to be back. Don't, don't, forget about, don't forget about the other two matches on the card and uh, – if you win, you're in. So, That's right. you know, the winners of those two matches will also advance into the Battle Royal for an opportunity. And that 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 means the tag team match, too. So, Absolutely. you know, we, we could end up with one of the tag champs being the HVW champ as well. Absolutely. And 
Uh, we're going to next week uh, here on the show, next Tuesday night, folks, we're going to detail in great detail about the other two matches that Gary's talking about, plus the whole win in your end concept. So be sure you, you tune in for that eight o'clock next Tuesday. And if anything changes, we'll let you know. But yes, Mook will be taking on Jake Jacobs uh, and John Matthews will be taking on Elijah Proctor. So absolutely uh, two big matches. And yes, the tag team matches we just talked about. Um, Mook has just checked in, ladies and gentlemen. Mook says, once I kick the head off of Jake Jacobs, I'm coming for the gold. Hey, uh, enough said. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a great way to end the program here, kids. Um, we want to thank everybody for tuning in here tonight. For yes, giving us thank a, you guys. For giving us your time and attention. One more time before we get out of here, let's remind the good people. Oh, someone just wrote a book. Yeah, get, let's see who it is. Oh, God. You know what? I don't. I don't want to end on this. Do I have to end on this? You, uh, you assume the NAV is not taking the outlaws lightly. To the contrary, Cross and Riley are taking every opponent very serious. And when they get those titles, if a team they face on June 5th can rest, rest assured that they will get their shot at those belts, NAV is an equal opportunity butt kickers. <laughs> All right. Here's how I want to end it. Judge says you guys are awesome. Boom. I'll take it, Judge. Yes, sir. We love you, buddy. Yeah, dude, Judge is the best, man. I had, in the brief interaction in times that I got to hang out with you guys in UWA back in Lenore, back in the good old days and all that stuff, he was always very cool to me, always very professional, made me feel at home. Some other guys didn't, uh, and I totally understand, and I hold no ill will. If I had, someone came into my locker room all of a sudden off the street and presumed to know stuff, I probably wouldn't like that either. So I totally get it. I totally get it. But Judge was always cool to me, so I've always appreciated that about him. Um, one more time before we go, Gary, remind the good people, how can they get their tickets to this show? Eventbrite. Type in High Velocity Wrestling. It'll take you to where you need to go. Or go on the HVW Facebook page, follow the link. Yes. And then Tom's got another one that you say that I don't remember. <laughs> the little dot thing that you do. I'm going to get it right tiny, this time. Tinyurl. Tinyurl.com slash HVWPGTIX. Bam! That's Ooh. High Velocity Wrestling Proven Ground Tickets. <laughs> That's I right. Said, I said I made it easy. But it's it's a, it's better than like numbers and, and slashes and whatnot and a dot .com and like 400 characters. Yes. I don't want to do that. Right. So, yes. Um, get your tickets, kids. You won't be sorry. This is going to be a fun show. It's going to be awesome. We're going to close on a double here tonight. We won't go single here on the on the screen for you. Um, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in tonight, for hanging out with us. We'll be back next Tuesday. If anything changes, we'll let you know. Yes. Thanks again. Everybody have a great night. We'll see you next Peace. time. Get your tickets. Don't forget, now. stay stay up to date on all of our social media. We'll keep you abreast of what's going on. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks again, everybody. That's it for us. See you next time. HVW official podcast.